Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and the first question of the day. Biddle and Tatum won the Nobel Prize for the experiment that demonstrated that one gene corresponds to one protein. That conclusion is challenged by the phenomenon of and you have to choose one of these answers. These two scientists got a Nobel Prize for the idea that genes specify proteins, but the mistake was thinking that one gene specify one protein. Actually, one gene consists of multiple regions, which we call exons and introns. And we have about 23,000 of genes, but we have about 100,000 proteins. So let's say we have here exon number one, two, three, four, and five. And this fragments in the middle, which we call introns, actually would be transcribed when messenger RNA is made, but would be deleted from the messenger RNA after transcription, they're not going to be translated in the protein. And these exons can combine differently. For example, we may see all of them present in the final messenger RNA that specify a certain protein, but we also can see that, for example, it would consist of this fragment, this fragment, and this fragment. So this is one variant, another variant would be that this fragment would be present, this fragment, and this. It can be third variant, and yet another combination can be, for example, that this fragment, this, this, and this would be present in the final messenger RNA, which specifies certain proteins. So as you see, one gene can specify a number of different proteins, which of course are going to be related to one another because they are going to have uh, fragments of the same sequence. So as you see, alternative splicing explains how 23,000 of genes can specify 100,000 of proteins. And second question, an oil drop with a polar coat is metaphor referring to the three-dimensional structure of, and you have to choose one of these proteins. Take a look at this picture, what kind of protein you see here. It looks like globular protein. The name comes from its shape, and it is globular because inside we can find are groups of the amino acid that is not charged and which basically represent hydrocarbons and repel water. So this is going to be a core of such a protein and on the outside we can find mostly those amino acids with R groups which are charged or which are polar. This makes this protein water soluble, but you have to understand also that on the outside there also can be some non-polar amino acids and polar amino acids we also can find inside. So here we are just talking about majority. Majority of the polar and charged amino acid we will find outside and majority amino acid that we can find inside is going to be non-polar and non-charged. Because outside we mostly would see molecules of water which are polar molecules. And now we can choose the correct answer. As you see, the correct answer is going to be answer C, globular protein. And this is all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next video. Goodbye.